Vision 2022 started in 2014, in January, and then covers two phases, the 2014 World Cup to the 2018 World Cup, and then after the 2018 World Cup to the 2022 World Cup. What are the issues that South African football faced? One, we identified that we do not have enough coaches and that the player-coach ratio was too uh, huge. <clears throat> it was over 200 players for one coach and very often that coach uh, would have a D license uh, or no coaching qualifications. So we had to hone in and focus on getting more qualified coaches. Secondly, we did not have enough women coaches, women referees, so uh, women technical officers was one of the focused areas. Uh, thirdly, we have to have structured competition at junior level. Um, and therefore, we have to go down to the LFAs and our regions to make sure they have under 13, 15, 17, and under 19 leagues. Uh, that is still very much um, a work in progress in that we're making now an assessment of exactly what progress have been made at that level. I must say that in certain LFAs and certain regions, they've made tremendous pro progress. Uh, we've just looked this week uh, at KZN and even the most rural areas, um, area like Nkandla would have uh, 27 junior teams uh, and this is to be encouraged uh, in other regions. So we have a very strong junior structure. The third thing we had to look at was that our national teams had to qualify for the African Cup of Nations and the World Cup at junior level so that the player should not have his first cap or her first cap at the level of Banyana or Bafana. And this was often the case. <clears throat> what was then the result? From the period of the first uh, World Cup, uh, Junior World Cup, 2015, our under-17 qualified for the World Cup uh, in Chile. That is under-17 boys or men. The under-17 girls qualified for the FIFA World Cup in Uruguay. So both under-17 men and women qualified for the World Cup. Under-20 uh, men's team qualified for the 2017 World Cup in Korea and also qualified for the World Cup in Poland in 2019. So we qualified for both back-to-back under-20 World Cups. Under 23, uh, at the level of the Olympics, we had both teams in the Rio Olympics, both the women team and the men under 23 team. At the senior level, uh, Bafana qualified for the African Cup of Nations 2015 and also qualified for African Cup of Nations 2019. In fact, went to the quarterfinals of the African Cup of Nations uh, 2019. Banyana qualified for every African Cup of Nations uh, right through in 16, uh, 18, and in 2018, of course, they went to the final and lost on a penalty shootout against Nigeria. And as a result of that, they qualified for the first uh, South African team to qualify for Women's World Cup in the 2019 uh, World Cup in France. So all of our teams qualified for the World Cup except the under 20 women team. Uh, <clears throat> when we look at Bofana of course uh, did not qualify for the 2018 World Cup uh, in Russia. So in the first phase, the period 2014 to 2018, we qualified for every single major competition, both uh, organized by CAF and FIFA, except for the Senior Men's uh, World Cup and the Under-20 Women World Cup. All the other competitions were qualified and participated in those competitions. Uh, so we were very happy with the result that we have achieved. Secondly, 
in this period, all of our women teams were now coached by women. Uh, we had a situation where all women teams were coached by men. So all the teams are now coached by women, and these women are well qualified. Uh, and we are training more and more women. And so you find, for example, in a region of Okanyakude, which is in KZN, we have 45 women coaches in that area. Um, and more of the women are coming through uh, to get their qualifications. <clears throat> we also established the Women's National League, and now we have the Sasso League at the provincial level and the Women's National League, which started off uh, this year, and they're making great strides. It's the first year, uh, and we are one of the few federations on the African continent who have a Women's League. The consequence of that is that uh, our women team has been the champion team uh, for four consecutive Kosafa Cups. Uh, to such an extent now that we've won the cup outright and, and the cup now, Kosafa Cup, is owned by South Africa. But what we also see is the movement of our women players into the best leagues in the world. And when they go to China, um, Linda uh, Matlau is playing there, Tembi Khatlana is p uh, playing there. And then the biggest move was when Rafila Ajani went to uh, AC Milan and saw her last week uh, when she played for AC Milan against Inter Milan uh, in the UEFA Champions League and all over the world. And whether you go to Sweden, Denmark, Lithuania, uh, <coughs> Cyprus or the United States, you find many South African women playing in the top leagues in the world. Uh, this is a position that we didn't have before. So we have many women. Also, young South African footballers are now playing in Europe, in every country in Europe. And whether you go to England, Germany, uh, Finland, Denmark, uh, Turkey, France, all over, you'll find South African young players. Uh, and that is, is seen also when we select our under-23 team. And our under-20 team, we now have uh, foreign-based players in these uh, teams. What we then have to, to focus on is to strengthen the, the work that has been done, to train more referees, to improve the quality of refereeing and drive the coaching program because better qualified coaches, better coaches will produce better players and better national teams. Uh, and we, we've seen that. When you look at the two World Cup winners Germany and Spain. Virtually every coach in these two countries have an A license. We've started with D license. We hope they will progress so that all of our coaches eventually will have A licenses because the quality will impact the quality of players that we produce. We also look at strengthening our competitions. Uh, <clears throat> and we have now asked each of our regions to fill in a compliance matrix uh, as to what, how many leagues they have, juniors, seniors, uh, look at how many referees and how many uh, officials, technical officials we have to support the game. One key area of course is school sport and uh, the K Matsepe Cup uh, is one of our school's competitions. We've just seen the quality in Bloemfontein in the finals. Uh, where Clapham for the third consecutive year became the winner, national winner of, of the school's competition. But we want to strengthen that there are 26,000 schools in this country and uh, we hardly have uh, more than 30% of the schools playing uh, schools football. We also want girls to play uh, at the level of schools and that is encouraging to see how many girls are now being attracted and playing uh, in uh, schools and also in our leagues. Uh, we have 456,000 women footballers. We want by 2022 1 million uh, women footballers. So overall I think that uh, we are very happy with the progress that we've made but uh, we're not going to re rest on our laurels. We're going to work harder because we want 
to make sure that we are amongst the best on the continent and among the best in the world.